The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by the owl cat named Archimedes. <laughs> that is Eric Velasquez. My pronouns are also he, him. <laughs> All right, Anthony, what are we doing? This is kind of a patchy situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so this week we are talking about patchwork. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I kind of hinted last week that like this is a very unique film. That uh, it is. <laughs> I feel like this is something that I had kind of thought about would be an interesting idea before I saw this movie, which is like the idea that like the parts of the Frankenstein monster are all sort of part of its personality in a way. Like I think I remember writing a story when I was in like high school where like. It was the monster being haunted by, like, the ghosts of all of his body parts. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of what this is. You, you you got, like, you know, these three women who, like, all three of their consciousnesses are inside. Body. Yeah, and it, it makes for a lot of really, like, fun, interesting stuff. You know, like, we talk a lot about, like, where does the soul of the monster come from? And in this case, it's just, it, you know, it's a direct copy of these you know the three women used to make this this creature yeah but i i also have to say like the the idea is great but i also feel like this maybe we should have done this maybe a couple months ago because this is low-key a reanimator film oh for sure yeah right and the i'm not gonna get too much into it but definitely the idea of reanimating each individual part is is definitely uh, alive and well here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get into. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's just go ahead and dig into it. So it starts off, and you've got like it's one of those scenes where like you don't know what's happening at first. You've got a man, and he's like talking flirtatiously to this woman. You can see like her from the back. You know, like it's like a over the shoulder kind of shot deal. Yeah, you see her blonde hair. Yeah, uh, and he's just kind of flirting with her and stuff. And then when it cuts to the reverse shot we see that no this is actually a decapitated head and sitting head. on a metal tray i, uh, I it, literally called that i was like oh my god he's talking to a decapitated head <laughs> Jeez, sorry and that's yeah i mean that's very reanimator you got the metal tray and the head sitting on it i mean it, you know definitely i love uh, how he's just flirting with it though he's just <laughs> casually like hey how you know you come here often <laughs> Yeah, there's like a series of sort of like men in lab coats. I don't know who are doctors and who are like assistants or whatever, but right. they they add a lot of the comedic element to this movie. And then like even in this case, you know, you have him being like a weirdo and then you have like another guy who like pops in and he's like, what you doing? Right. <laughs> and he's like, nothing. <laughs> like, he's like trying to act totally, like, yeah, you know. I love just... how the guy's just sucking on a Capri Sun though, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah so he's like oh i'm not talking to, i was just working on this arm and he just like takes right. an arm and starts stapling it trying to act like he's doing work and stuff like, nothing just stapling the arm yeah. like come on man all right <laughs> and so the his buddy leaves and then like this is probably the most reanimator ish thing is that mm -hmm. he goes and he pulls this bowl of green glowing liquid from a it's microwave reagent. yeah it's it totally <laughs> reagent uh, and he, like, you know, fills a syringe and... But, like, it, it's great that he microwaves it, like... Right. You gotta warm it up, man. It, it's it's inert unless you warm it up a bit. Uh, but then, yeah, he, like, aggressively injects a body off screen, like, you know, stabs the needle down. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, as we see a lot, like, nothing happens immediately and he's right away just like, fuck, it didn't work, you know? And, you know, he walks off and then we just see a hand shoot up from off frame. Yeah, we hear a little crack, the cracking of eggs, basically, as the uh, 
limbs are uh, starting to get their movement or back right yeah and the hands all like crooked and angular and just yeah it looks so cool and then we get title card patchwork <laughs> and then like the credits which kind of feel a little bit like reanimator but even Very more than much so even more than that they feel like the Saul bass stuff from like the you know like vertigo and that anatomy of a murder is that the preminger one that has all the little body parts that move around and stuff i believe uh, it to be but yeah it also is showing just three the body of three females uh being like literally dissected and spliced together and it's like all you know it's real sharp like draw you know it's like single color drawings and like yeah it but it looks, yeah, it looks super cool and stylistic and everything. And then as soon as the credits end, we just get part one, Jennifer. Yeah. So, yeah, we get uh, Jennifer, who is a very um, business-oriented person, <laughs> as in that is the only thing they're oriented towards. Apparently, she's getting ready to celebrate uh, some good news. She's got two things to, to go over. <laughs> uh, one is her birthday. Oh, yeah, she was just like, it's a double celebration. She keeps yeah. saying that over and over again. But, yeah, her birthday, and then she has, like, some kind of promotion or something it's something you know work celebration yeah she she closed a uh big account recently for the for the firm whatever firm that was (laughs) whatever that firm does she did it and she's a really (laughs) interesting character because it's she's not really likable but you still also kind of feel sorry for her right Uh, like it's because like she's like oh yeah i'm gonna have a bunch of people coming there's gonna be a bunch of people and then like they goes to the text and, like, literally everyone's like, I'm not coming. I'm not going to make it. It's not happening. Yeah. And then her, she, a couple friends are like, we'll be late. Yeah. Like, she asks the waiter for, like, bring us some extra chairs. There's going to be a lot of people. And can you bring out some kind of, like, little cake or something at, when I give you the signal? She's not rude to the waiter, so you have to give her that. But she's, you know, you definitely get the sense that, like, this woman is so single-minded. Like, that's clearly why no one wants to spend any time with her, because this is just how she is all the time. But it is kind of pitiful when you have somebody who's, like, trying to celebrate something and they're just alone. Yeah. But, of course, she's not exactly alone, because she does have people (laughs) that are trying to interject themselves at points. But I think at this point, two of her friends do show up. They're a little bit late. They were like, oh, we've been held up, but because she's a control freak, she's like, yeah, that's why I told everyone to leave early. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So you get a feeling that she is always in control of the situation. Yeah. Over the course of the night, the first person who stops by, I think, is her, like, boyfriend. Right. Who we find... He's Dan. Dan, okay. Yeah. Uh, and we find out that he's married and, like... Immediately. You know, yeah, and he's like, well, you know, I wanted to stop by, but I can't stay long because i got to get home to the wife and, you know... <laughs> Uh, but so like she knows that he's having an affair. It's not, but like uh, you know, obviously his wife is not aware of this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's just a shitty guy who's just like taking advantage of this woman who's clearly pretty alone. And you know, so he just kind of pops in just to kind of keep her happy, and then you know leaves. Yeah, he's like, hey, I might uh, come over for a midnight one of my midnight jogs and give you a, a birthday present. <laughs> yeah, she says something about that she'll wear the pink thing that he likes. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then you, we meet Garrett, who is like seems to be somebody she knew in college or high school or something. Uh, by the way, played by James Phelps of Harry Potter fame, one of the uh, I, I don't remember if he was Fred or George. Oh yeah, the twins. Right, I, I he did look familiar, but I did not. I didn't look him up. But yep, you're right. Oh yep, he's Fred. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this guy looks familiar. Oh, he, that's a Potter guy. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. And with him, he's kind of the thing that makes like fully pushes her over into like the unlikable category cuz like here you have somebody who like he's actually trying to be nice to her. He wasn't like he hasn't seen her in a while. He's not like a person who was invited to this party, but he just, but, you know, sees her and he's like, "Oh, I, I, I remember her and you're sitting alone. I'm going to go say hi and chat and stuff." And she's really dismissive. She doesn't know his name. Calls him uh, Jerry. Yeah, and he, she keeps kind of like good to see you like kind of trying to you know get him to go away but i I do like how he's like hey you're kind of alone i'm i've got friends over here you can just come over hang out with us and she's like no 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 i've got i've got stuff to do yeah so like he's clearly a good dude and she's just not having it because for whatever reason she thinks she's above him um you know she's got all these friends she i'm guessing these are like you know status friends that are like high level people in her you know career or whatever then she finally like two of her friends do arrive and it's like a couple i think Mm -hmm. she kind of uses them as an excuse to like shoo garrett away 
and like quickly just bores these two friends to death like yeah like you said she is so career oriented that all she's talking about is the job and the new accounts and all this and like they're just like clearly just bored out of their minds i mean it, she's she's very proud and she should be of her accomplishment of apparently getting uh their firm to be partners with the this whatever this other company is in their entire midwest branch right she mm. deserves that good win for her however these people are here for your birthday <laughs> Yeah, you gotta, you gotta take them into consideration. Yeah, so eventually they're like, "Oh, you know, look at the time. We gotta get home," yeah. and and so they they leave, and now she's just kind of sitting alone. And while her two friends are there, she kind of does like a little motion thing to the waiter. But like, then the friends leave, and then he shows up with just well, like. Did you notice he actually like he he mumbles that she's a, such a bitch? <laughs> did did you get that? I didn't see that, but I'm, I'm like. I mean, that's kind of weird, man. She wasn't really that bad, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then he arrives. He's got like a single sad cupcake <laughs> that's like extra <laughs> sad. <laughs> and she just gets it while she's sitting there by herself. Yeah. And she looks over and there's like a big bachelorette party in the corner. And all these, you know, women are happy and laughing and stuff. And she's just like by herself. But someone's clearly watching her now. Because we see from the uh, cell phone angle that they're taking video of her. Or at least photos. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And then, like, we just pretty much cut to later that night. She's arrived back at her apartment. She, like, comes in, turns on the TV, and there's a commercial for plastic surgery. But wait, these are the guys we saw at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yep. Yep, so we're connecting some dots here already, <laughs> you know, and the commercials looks pretty, it's like bargain basement, sketchy kind of plastic surgery, but yeah. so she puts on the pink thing that she had mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and then it's her just kind of walking around her apartment, like she's eating snacks, she's taking photos and trying to text the guy and sends him some pictures or whatever. I do love how she just sits down to like a tray of nori, uh, sea <laughs> like seaweed crackers. <laughs> yeah. It's like, just, all right, well. Just munching on seaweed. <laughs> right. But then, just out of the blue, she's just hit on the back of the head from off camera. And then you see her laying on the ground, and she's just dragged off screen, leaving a trail of blood on the floor. Right. Her eyes are wide open. So, I mean, Jennifer's dead. Like, we've got we've got her first kill. Yeah. Okay. That, hmm. And then it just cuts to part two, AWOL. AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we're in the... Frankenstein lab basically uh, and it starts out and you get like a close up of an eye opening and then you see like you see some like body parts and stuff just kind of like nebulous sort of shots of like close ups where it's not like necessarily detached body parts but it's very close shots of the body with voiceover and I think that's what you were probably getting ready to yeah exactly we've got a bunch of different voices coming in <laughs> like you know she actually says or they actually say you know, I hate this feeling. My skin's crawling. I have bad breath. I'm thirsty. Hard to breathe. Feel puffy. Gross. Arms heavy. Knee, uh, knees weak. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> it's like basically three voices. It's, it's happening so quick that like you don't realize it's necessarily three. But you hear a bunch of female voices describing the feelings of having a hangover, basically. Yeah. And then we get like a, you know, we finally see like a wide shot. Uh, and this like body, you know, this female body waking up on the slab, sitting up, vomiting, and then like right. stumbling down the hall in like a, a way that could be like a Frankenstein monster getting used to its body or like a person who's still like dealing with the effects of alcohol. <laughs> right. They're hungover. <laughs> yeah. And so ultimately this creature creation makes it to a bathroom and looks in the mirror. And then that's when we finally see the face. And it is, like, a stitched-up woman face to the point that, like, half of the head has short blonde hair and half the head has... Or, no, it's short, short brunette, brunette hair, hair and long, long blonde, blonde hair on the other side, yeah. Right. But it's clearly just Jennifer, the, Jennifer's actress. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. They just did know. some makeup, put in a contact in one eye, and gave her a weird wig and stuff. So now we see that, you know, Jennifer has been killed and used as part of this new monster. Yeah, amalgamation, basically. Basically. Yeah. Uh, but of course, wow, that's a shock to the system, right? So <laughs> yeah. the 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 creature slash lady has a little bit of a freak out and she starts like seizing up a bit. 
And suddenly, in in the midst of that, like, the voices sort of become aware of each other. Like, before, they were just kind of, like, talking, like, kind of babbling. In the, but suddenly, one's like, you know, who said that? Get out of my head. What's going on? Mm-hmm. And then we get, like, what really makes this movie work is, like, a visual representation of the three women. So, like, they're in this same space that we're seeing, just kind of this grimy lab space. But now we're seeing each of them separately. And it's kind of like, this is what's going on in the brain, is them sort of, like, discussing what's happening. So we we kind of get to meet, like, Jennifer sort of introduces herself. And then we also meet the other two, which are Ellie. She's the one that has the long blonde hair in the equation. And then Madeline, who has, like, long red hair. Now, of course, she she's not represented as much physically as the other two, but she's uh, she's definitely a strong influence in, in the mind, at least. Mm-hmm. So, of course, they're all freaking out because, you know, they're each individually controlling their respective <laughs> parts of their bodies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they're kind of, like, they're arguing over control, and then we, like, cut back to, like, real life, and we see the creature, and, you know, she's, like, bending awkwardly and twitching and moving strangely because you've got three people fighting for control, basically. Right. But then suddenly they're like, wait, if we're this weird amalgamation of people, we've been put in this weird body, we got to figure out why we're here and who else is here. Like, we might be in danger, so we need to, like, get moving. So then that kind of, like, convinces them to work together. Now, as they're getting up and walking away, they happen upon a cage, and what should be inside that cage but an owl cat! (laughs) Or maybe cat owl? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's this weird hybrid creature. <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> it just for it that felt very Reanimator too. Yeah. Like that's definitely a Herbert West thing right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, of course, they find it cute too because I mean it is. Come on. Oh yeah, it's adorable. Mm-hmm. But so they kind of like drag themselves out and they get to like a slab, you know, like a metal morgue slab and people are coming in like, you know, from down the hall or whatever. And they like jump up and play dead basically on the slab as these two guys arrive. And these are two new doctors or medical personnel at this facility. Yeah, I feel like these guys are more medical assistants than anything. I believe they're... uh... Lloyd and Will, they're really not given too much of a name. It's this is what I'm going by on IMDb. <laughs> so And they they are like definitely the comic relief in this. Like one of them is uh is Eric Edelstein. Yeah, Eric Edelstein. Yeah. Yeah, and he I mean he's a guy that shows up in like any sitcom he's he's had a part in it. He's hilarious. He's been in like drunk history and stuff. Um but But of course at, he's coming in with a jelly donut. <laughs> They're in this morgue. It's this nasty, <laughs> and like they're just arguing about donuts. And he's just like, he, he, he he's not grossed out by it, but his partner's like, this is fu- you, you can't be eating in here. This is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, I don't want to hear about your donut. And he's complaining that there's not as much jelly in it, and it's like this whole corn syrup. <laughs> yeah. Damn it! If this was Reagan's era, we wouldn't be dealing with this. Yeah. That's what he says. I don't. I don't believe it. That's exactly <laughs> when corn syrup came in. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So they, like, go to look at the body, and then, like, one of them sees, like, a twitch, and they're like, wait, did you see that? And you know, Oh, no, kinda... first Will picks up the, the bag of, uh, the bag of just random body parts that just spills all over his shoes. Oh, God, yeah, it's like a trash yeah. bag that just bursts and just, like, guts and everything on the floor. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, they, they, like, you know, it's like, hey, did you see her move, I think? And then, all of a sudden, she, like, jumps up and runs away. <laughs> right. As you do. <laughs> uh, and then in the hallway, she runs into another... This is a fifth guy, right? It's not any of yeah. the guys we've seen before. No, I, it. I, I literally thought this was the, the Capri Sun guy. But no, this is a totally different person. Yeah. When you got a bunch of... Kind of like They do kind of look similar and they're all in white lab coats. They do kind of blur together a little bit. Mm-hmm. But this guy, you don't have to worry about for too long because nope, she... she just uh, snaps his neck. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, like, kung fu style, just neck snap. And I'm like, wait a second. Which one of them knew that move? <laughs> and they're all kind of surprised by it. Then you hear, like, their inner dialogue, and it's like, OMG, did I just kill someone? Right? <laughs> like, no, we killed someone. It was right. a team effort. <laughs> <laughs> but that was right at the door so she runs outside runs in front of a cab that stops and she jumps in and you know is like hurry go 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 you know and and so like the driver drives away and is kind of like talking to her trying to figure out where she wants to go what's going on and she's not really communicative i don't think she's like you know that's pretty normal with the monster is not talking right away so we don't really get much out of her well uh, she does and- say one thing that's really weird <laughs> She just screams out, just drive, in, in the 
most demonic voice, and it's like, oh, that's maybe there's a fourth person in there. <laughs> Ah. But yeah, so then the driver's like, wait a minute, you don't have any money to pay for right. this, do you? You're, you're, then, you're, half, you're half naked, you you may be a junkie, who knows, but yeah. Yeah, and then it just cuts to him like screeching to a halt at the curb. She's just standing on the sidewalk and he's like, fucking junkie, and like speeds <laughs> away. By the way, can we give props to this movie for actually having kind of a realistic <laughs> interaction between like what what would probably happen nowadays? Because you would take a look at this person and be, not be like, oh, that's a monster. No, you'd be like, this is a lady who's either gone, seen some shit. Mm-hmm. You know, she's just a normal person who's clearly seen some shit. And yeah, and I think, so I don't know if this is the newest movie that we've watched, but it definitely feels the most modern. Yeah, 2015. It's pretty close. Yeah, I think like the, you know, the the Italian Herbert West would have been was, newer, but it was set in a, or it felt, you know, a little bit more like classic. Like here we have people texting and stuff, you know, it's it's definitely of our time period. I feel like that Herbert West still hasn't ended. It's still going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, tra- I'm trapped in it. <laughs> And then continue with what you're saying, where it's just like the way people see strange things in our world. She walks a little further and she sees a guy on the sidewalk who's clearly like a, you know, unhoused person. And he's clearly mentally ill as well. And they basically just like stare at each other and they're both talking to themselves and just kind of like, all right, you know, it's kind of like a... (laughs) you know game recognizes game kind of thing where they're just like yep we we're in very similar situations they're both talking to themselves but for different reasons obviously and so she just you know walks on but he says something kind of weird he says that um that if she should die it's her own fault Hmm. did you pick up on that yeah i I didn't yeah so that's pretty interesting yeah that uh is uh you know, Is that maybe you... foreshadowing, maybe? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mm. <laughs> so they ultimately end up, they go to Jessica's apartment. Or Jennifer. Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> they that's go the to... fourth person, Jessica. <laughs> Got it. You know, they don't have her clothes, but she has a key under the rug, so she now lets herself in. That's the cle- That's the easiest way to get someone to come into your house and bash you on the back of the head. Come on, we <laughs> yeah. all know about the key under the doormat. Come on. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. But they go in, they you know, we can see blood on the floor from before and she sits down on the couch and then we get uh, you know, another sort of like mind palace scene of all three individually sitting on the couch talking mm-hmm. and Jennifer and Ellie are kind of like arguing about what to do next. And Madeline's like, we can't go anywhere. Like, look at us. We can't just be seen out in public like this. Right. If we go to the cops, we'll be locked up. If we go to the hospital, that's probably where whoever's doing this is going to look first. Yeah. But while they're just kind of arguing, like she like looks down at her hand and like just casually. Oh, they like, all do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in the individual, we see them all doing the same motion, and then we see, like, the the in real life. uh, It's kind of confusing to try to explain this movie because of, but, like, so she, the the creature version flicks her finger, and it just falls off. Right. (laughs) It's just a bloated finger that just slops off, basically. Yeah. And then we cut to her stapling it back on. Hey, uh, do you notice that she now immediately gains full use of that finger? That's a little weird. Yeah. It's so weird that everyone calls attention to it. Yeah. And they're like, hey, isn't that funny that we don't feel pain? Mm -hmm. And so then they're like immediately trying to test that. And, you know, that escalates quickly (laughs) to where they suddenly got a hammer. (laughs) Well, first Ellie runs into the fridge uh, (laughs) just just to test out the waters a little bit. Yeah, but then, yeah, they're sitting there with a big hammer. But before, like, Madeline and Ellie are on board. Like, they're like, let's do this. And Jennifer's like, maybe we should figure out what's going on. What's the last thing that you remember? They quickly realize, oh, we were all at the same bar. We were at Trader Vicks. I mean, Vicks. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got my Werewolves of London mixed in here. <laughs> Yeah, so they're like, clearly somebody saw us at the bar and followed us. Like, that's that's clearly the, like, key to this is, is the bar. Yeah. It's fixed uh, place. Yeah. So then Jennifer decides to call her boyfriend to mm-hmm. check in with him and see what's going on. But, you know, she obviously looks like a monster and so is trying to, like, 
you know, call without the camera on and everything. And she ends up talking to him and finds out that they've been missing for days. Right. So, like, she's basically, like, he's like, you didn't call into work. Like, you think you can get away with stuff like this? So, like, it sounds like she's probably lost her job in this process, even though she just had this big work celebration or whatever. Well, I, I like how he's like, hey, uh, this is this is over, you know. And she's like, am I being fired or are you breaking up with me? It's kind of like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, yes. Yeah. So, you know, not surprising that he's shitty. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so then, like, Ellie and Madeline start trying to threaten him, you know, speaking through the same mouth that that Jennifer (laughs) is. And he's Um, like, what the fuck? So, like, Jennifer really quickly just hangs up, and they're like, this relationship wasn't going anywhere. And they start to realize that they can kind of read each other's thoughts a little bit, like, because they're sharing this brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the science, here, you know, again, more reanimated sketchy, than Frankenstein. Yeah. It's, the, yeah. the science is, is a little, yeah. Then they talk about Garrett and, you know, they're like, well, oh, Jerry. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he's a, he's a med student. So maybe he's he, the one that did this to us. Yeah. He had to do it. Or if nothing out? else, he might be able to help us undo it. That's so one, right. one way or the other, we got to track him down. Now, how do we do that? We got to get a makeover. We got to get dressed up so we can hide ourselves well. Yeah. So for whatever reason, they decide that Jennifer doesn't have the necessary stuff for a makeover. She, she has pants, suits, and blazers. Yeah. So they're like, we're going to go to Ellie's house. Mm-hmm. So then they get to Ellie's and they imme- she immediately like, puts on uh, an iPod into like a little iPod dock. So, you know, it's modern, but not, you know, it's too there's modern. an iPod dock. It's, yeah. it's a little retro now at this point. Um, and they're just listening to music and I really like this scene. They have a lot, like they're kind of look, you know, picking through clothes. They're not really trying stuff on yet, but they're just kind of going through the closet and they start talking about like who they are. And they talk about like, I can do this. I have this skill, you know, I like this thing. And it's, it's kind of really nice that they're getting to meet each other. Right. And well, a lot of, uh, they're looking in the mirror as well. And they're like, Oh God, we look so awful. We look terrible. And Madeline perks up and is like, no, we're beautiful. And I'm like, oh, she crazy. <laughs> and Madeline's definitely given off like the she's she's, she's the weird. odd one out. Like yeah. she's definitely strange. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, there's I don't know. There's something really sweet about this. It, it feels like a it's like a slumber party. You know, it's just like yeah. they're just chatting, talking about, you know, things they like, things they don't. They're personal history they're just kind of bonding and they're humanizing each other right we learned uh, that ellie was a cheerleader and a cam girl uh, <laughs> yeah maybe she didn't know she was a cam girl exactly but she did take pictures of herself and send them out for money uh <laughs> madeline of course was a pianist a little bit of a horse girl you mm-hmm. know for those of you who know that she's <laughs> but she's also seems to be the most sensitive of all of them oh and then, yeah of course jennifer being the type a personality that she is uh played um what was it? Uh, was it lacrosse or polo? Lacrosse, I think she said. Lacrosse, okay. And, yeah. But she also took uh, martial arts. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so she's definitely like the intense one. Yeah, so maybe she was the one who learned how to break necks. Like <laughs> and then we get like a great just little scene where like Ellie's roommate is standing outside of her door <laughs> on the phone with somebody and is just like, she's just in there. T- I-, I live with a crazy person. She's just talking to herself in in her room. I do like how she's like, she always eats all my garlic hummus. And I was like, listen here, you little shit. That stuff's <laughs> delicious, okay? <laughs> And this is like, I, I wouldn't necessarily have, have clocked this or recognized her, but so the, the roommate outside the door is Amanda Lund, mm-hmm. um, who's like a comedian. She's married to Matt Gorley, who's done a lot of stuff. But so she's wearing a, a basketball jersey that says pistol shrimps on it. I don't know if you know about this whole thing, but there is a like a ladies intramural basketball league in LA that is like mostly made up of like actresses and comedians. Uh, and there was like a big documentary about the pistol shrimps, just this one team. Cause it was like Aubrey Plaza's on it and all this, right. but like, yeah, it's, it's just this weird sort of like world. That's there's like, yeah, a documentary. There's a podcast all about it. But anyway, um, Amanda Lund is one of the players and is wearing the jersey. And then Madeline is also a, a member of the team, uh, Maria Blasucci. So it's they probably just like, hey, I'll call my friend. She can do a little cameo right. as this like one scene roommate. Oh, by the way, yeah, yeah, that that's really amazing. Actually, I love it. <laughs> and so yeah, then after we see the roommate, we cut to another title card, part three, Ellie. By the way, can of... we can we immediately determine that that was absolutely a Sam Raimi style cut to the hats? That they put oh. on. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a, 
Like, Sam Raimi's handprints are all over this thing, yet he did... I, I'm positive he has not touched it at all. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, the way the camera moves and the way, like, the twitchy way that the creature moves, like, feels very, like, deadite. Like, there's a lot of, like, yeah, definitely. The way his... it zooms in on people during intense moments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, we're going to uh, part three, Ellie. And so now we're flashing back and kind of getting what we saw with Jennifer. Now we're seeing Ellie's night you know, before everything happened. And we find that, you know, she seems like the, like the pretty popular has it all together. You know, I mean, she, you know, her talking about the cam girl thing, she definitely seemed like she didn't, she was like, sometimes right. guys pay me money and I send them pictures. Pictures. Yeah. Uh, and she, she like, didn't seem like she fully understood. But like, now that we see that, like, she's definitely just as like awkward and like uncomfortable as the other two, you know? So yeah. she's like in the bathroom and she's practicing meeting someone. She's like, you know, talking to herself in the mirror and, yeah flirting with her own reflection and then she walks out uh at, you know walks out of the bathroom and is walking through the bar and you can tell she's like really putting on airs of like trying to be cool but she keeps kind of like bumping into people and she gets to the bar and kind of like tries to like act cool and wave at the bartender and they just completely ignore her and like this yeah this feels like this felt like me like i just this is the kind of social awkward that I am. So she ends up like she, there's like this guy that's kind of like bloviating to this group of women. We find out his name's Peter and she just kind of like joins the conversation, just kind of like worms her way in and is like, oh, that's very interesting. And we find out that he's like a artist or something. Well, he's not, he, this guy is uh, the quintessential uh, full of shit uh, artiste mm -hmm. that he just, he's, he doesn't make art. He he possibly does art. He really doesn't do anything. He just talks about doing it. Yeah, he's like, you know, my collective, we've really moved away from the idea of creation. Like, right. like That's so yeah. capitalist. Yeah. Uh, he's just, yeah, he sucks. But, like, you know, right. these, these women are just, like, hanging on every word that he's saying. And then, of course, we've got this one girl who, uh, she was the one that Ellie bumped into earlier. But, of course... As Ellie tries to ingratiate herself into the conversation, she kind of interrupts her and they start calling her, I believe, Lily or Shelly or a mixture of the two. Yeah, they keep switching back and forth. And it's like one of those deals where she keeps correcting them and they just keep saying the wrong name. Right. Like, it's just terrible. So she ends up like, she, she actually says that she knew Peter. Like, she knows him from somewhere and he, like, doesn't really recognize her. But he's still really flirtatious with, like, you know, he's just like, any girl around, like, you know, it's an opportunity. So he, it, It's more for stroking his ego than anything. Oh, definitely. Um, and, but she, so at some point in the night, she ends up, she goes back to the bathroom. Uh, and when she comes back out, Peter is making out with that other girl. And she, you know, she sees it from, from a distance. Ellie does and is like upset. And then like immediately all the other girls walk up to him and they're just like, all right, let's get out of here. And they just leave without Ellie. So like they, they clearly they don't care you. about hair at all. Yeah. So it's like double heartbreak, like him making out with somebody else. And then them all just leaving and abandoning her. Well, to make it even better, they <laughs> stiff her with the tab. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The bartender is like, "Here's here's the check," um, but then there's two frat bros show up, and they right. they're like, "Well, we can take care of this half. It's no big deal. Why don't you come back to our house? Me and my bro here, we, you can hang out." And she's so oblivious that like she's like, "Oh, it's so nice that you're close to your family." Uh, not He's realizing, like, yeah, yeah, my, my bros, <laughs> my my family, yeah, yeah. We also, again, see, as they're, like, getting ready to leave, we see somebody in the bar is filming her on a phone as well. So, you mm. know, clearly, whoever's filming this is, is the one up to whatever happened. But then we get a little bit more awkward filming when we, you know, go back to her, or see her at the frat house where she's making out with frat bro number one while, you know, According frat to IMDb, <laughs> his name is Lance, but I don't really want to call him Lance. <laughs> I, th I think either... either Pardon me, but fuck boy or frat bro number one will do just fine. Yeah, and like he he introduces the rest of them, and it's like, hey, I this can't. Is Doug. Yeah, and this Doug. is Doug and other Doug and <laughs> Dave. Dave, Dave. Yeah, it's just really generic dude names. Um, but he's such a nice guy. <laughs> and it's like they're making out, and like there's just this row of guys watching, and she's like, what? Why? And he's like, this yeah. is Doug. It's cool. He's fine. She's yeah. like, what about him? And oh, that's other Doug. He's fine too. And then like the next guy's filming and she's like, this is, no, this is weird. Right. So she finally like, you know, is just like, no, that, I'm not doing this. This is messed up. So she yeah. gets up to leave, goes to walk home and like, is immediately hit by a white van. <laughs> I, I Yeah, I love that, by the way. She's just walking out. It's like, oh, what's going to happen here? And then it cuts to the scene behind her where it actually includes the street and, you're like, and you see the lights come up and you're like, oh, she's going to get hit. And she <laughs> does. 
She gets yeah. uh, truck uh for those yeah. anime fans out there. <laughs> and so then we get the next title card, and uh, Makeover. So now we're back in the present time and the creature has like done herself up like the invisible man basically she's like all covered in bandages in a trench coat sunglasses just trying to kind of cover up all of the you know strange features and has managed to get to garrett's and knocks on his door and like immediately just kind of like shoves her way into the apartment and starts asking him all these questions by the way i do love that he is wearing a the shirt from think geek that says choose your favorite weapon and has all the <laughs> basically the D D dice mm-hmm. being d4 yeah. through d20 i'm like ah i i knew that i had that shirt <laughs> uh. Kindred spirit for sure. Yep, indeed. <laughs> but like, they're kind of interrogating him because, you know, they're still on the fence. Like, did he maybe have something to do with what's happened or can he maybe help us? Uh, and they quickly realize like, oh, no, he definitely he doesn't right. know anything. He definitely had nothing to do with this, but maybe he can help. So they like remove the bandages so that he can see what's going on. Then it just cuts to them like at a diner together. He's like eating some normal food while she's got like. Can we skip back a little bit? Sorry about that. Whenever she pins him up against the wall, uh, Madeline tells the collective to keep pressure at the base of his skull and tells Jen to stay in character. I'm like, oh, she's serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> like holy crap man yeah but yeah uh, so yeah going back to the meal where she's eating a copious amount of food it's like a steak with pasta on top of it that she then Waffles. drenches in whipped cream mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah it's uh it's you know it's basically the food version of her you know she's just mixing <laughs> yep. a bunch of things it's, together mm-hmm. <laughs> So Madeline wants steak and Ellie wants waffles and Jennifer wants pasta. So they just do it all. Yeah. And they're like, you know, we want you to fix us back, you know, put us back into our separate bodies. And he's like, that's not possible. What you already are is impossible. And trying to get you back to what you were is even more impossible. There's just no way. I mean, yeah, he's basically says, listen, so much of you, (laughs) each individual person has been removed that I don't know it would physically be possible to put any of you back together that's obviously upsetting news so they she leaves and walking along the street kind of upset hilariously she almost gets hit by a car (laughs) yeah but then she sees the ex-boyfriend and he's taking another woman into a motel presumably not his wife if he's going into this like sketchy motel so he's already moved on to a new mistress well the collective or as i like to call them the girls they don't like this (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) No. So, like, then it just kind of cuts to, like, a little later, and he's, like, leaving the motel, and, you know, the girl's like, can't you stay a little longer? And he's like, no, but, you know, I got stuff to do. And Gotta get back to my family. Yeah. So he goes and gets in his car, which is, like, a, you know, sports car, obviously. It's a nice Mustang, yeah. Yeah. Um, It's probably from, I I feel like it's probably from 2011, maybe 2010, Mm, that era of Mustang. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> I, I kind of know cars, not not too much, but yeah. So a newish model from the time when this movie was made, and then you know the creature pops up in the back seat, and you know, hey baby, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yep. So they obviously kill him, mm-hmm. and then we just have them a little later. Now they're they're kind of celebrating. We you know we killed this jerk, and they're like, this is what we need to do. Like we obviously are super strong. We're capable of killing people. Let's hunt down everybody responsible for us being the way we are and make them all pay. We gotta kill them. I think that's what Ellie says. But first, we gotta do the makeover. Yeah. <laughs> so they cut the hair to match, you know, so it's all short now mm-hmm. and dye it all pink. And, you know, she's still got like staples all across her face and everything. But, you know, she's she does look more cohesive than she has before. Right. She's got a nice layer of foundation to cover cover up the open wounds that are there. Yeah. But you know what else we get? Another title card. Part (laughs) five, Madeline. Yeah. So now we're flashing back again and we've got Madeline. She's sitting at the bar. She's taking selfies. She's kind of awkward about it. And like a guy approaches and sort of flirts with her. Yeah. It's the frat Uh, bros. The frat bros walk by, they see her and they just like keep moving. They don't even flirt with her, do they? But then we get a guy who does want to stay and hang out and we find out that he is celebrity Tom Blake. (laughs) Right. Of the Tom Blake adventures. Yeah. And she doesn't really seem to recognize him, but he's like, it's weird because like he wants her to know who he is, but he's also sort of like, it feels like he's working harder to impress her because she doesn't know who he is. Yeah. And she just doesn't care. 
yeah, she's not into the celebrity thing at all. She's she's into him. She's definitely curious about him, but like she doesn't care that he's like been in all these shows or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, like you know, she's she's a little creepy about how she like. She uh, likes his she, hands, Anthony. Yeah, she looks at his hands and she's like, your hands are perfect. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I used to be a hand model before I was an actor. And she's like, all right, you want to get out of here? Right. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. So then we cut to her in bed later. She's wearing like one of those like stocking caps. Yeah. So like holding her hair down. And then we see that the long red hair that we've seen her with That's is a wig. wig. Yeah. It's sitting over on a little, you know, head on the bedside table. I immediately, I want you to know that I wrote this in the notes. I said, I fucking knew it. When she gets up, she opens the fridge full of body parts. Absolutely <laughs> full of body parts. Yeah. Lousy with body parts. Yeah. And then she opens up her, her the basement door. And down there at the very bottom, we have Tom Blake bound with a ball gag in his mouth. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I knew it, damn it. Yeah, and through this whole thing, as we see the fridge full of body parts, and we see Tom, she's on the phone with somebody, somebody. and she's like, "Yeah, we don't, we, you know, we never really find out who or whatever." But she's talking to a friend, and she's like, "Hang on, let me, I got to check on my dog." And that's when she looks down the stairs and, mm-hmm. and sees Tom. So he's he's the dog. Yep. From there, her scene's pretty short. So then we cut to part six, rampage. Yeah, she looks out the window, and then we just skip. It's like something happened. What happened? We don't know yet. Yeah, but we uh, do have a rampage coming. Yeah, so part six, Rampage, and so now, you know, obviously we're, the creature is, you know, going to be on her sort of, like, revenge plot at this point. So she goes back to the bar first, and the bouncer won't let her in because she, you know, looks a little strange. Poor bastard tries to stop her. <laughs> I feel bad for him. And then we just cut to, like, inside the bar. We hear, like, we don't see her attack him, but we hear it from yeah. the people in the bar's perspective. We and do hear a loud just... crunch. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely like she's definitely killed this bouncer, uh, and then she just goes inside carrying the pole that uh, they use to block people out. <laughs> yeah, like the velvet rope kind of pole, yeah, yeah. and then she just like she sees Peter, the pretentious artist guy, and just hits him once with the pole, and he like falls down, and he's you know he was talking to some other girl, and yeah. she's like, "Were you with him a couple nights ago or whatever?" Yeah, trying to see if he night. yeah if he was involved in the whole thing, and she's like, "Yeah, you know, I was with him." He's you know, so basically he's got an alibi. He didn't have anything to do with it, but she's just well, like, that eh. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, so she beats him to death with the pole anyway. <laughs> right. I mean, to be fair, fair play to you, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy sucks, so, you know, yeah. go go for it. So then we cut to the frat house, and she's ah. outside. And the frat guys, like, before, they were just kind of, like, kind of sketchy frat dudes. But here we get to really see how just gross they are. Yeah. So, like, uh, you know, she knocks on the door, and the guy's like, are you here, you here for the slut conference? And she's like, the what? <laughs> and he's like, no, no, uh, or, uh, no, fuglies. no fuglies. Fuglies is the word, yeah. So he's like, you can't come in but okay by the way this is a badass scene like Mm -hmm. if if you want want the ultimate like feminist hardcore like riot girl scene this is for you because she puts in her fucking like her her earbuds and Mm -hmm. starts jamming out she like psychs herself up to whoop ass (laughs) yeah so then she just like bursts into the frat house still you know listening to music in her eye so we're getting to hear the music she's listening to while she just kills everybody in the place she just like mows down all the dudes in the first floor and then like goes up to the main frat bro number one to his room and he's basically pulling the same thing with some other girl he's trying to film her while they're making out but the buddies are hearing all this commotion they're like hey we ought to go find out what that is (laughs) and then lance slash frat bro number one starts sending them out one by one yeah he's like check (laughs) figure out what's going on check on it and then Uh, you just hear (laughs) Yeah, just all this nat- like gnarly sounds, and he's like, "Go check on him." Well, right. I don't know what that was about. And, like nobody's like something bad, you know. Uh, but so ultimately, you know, she bursts into the room and tells the girl, "Like get out of here, you know, you're safe, leave." And she starts talking to him, and he's like, "You fucking Franken bitch!" <laughs> right. Well, I-, I do like though, like the last guy tries to rush past her at the very end, and she just takes the paddle and just smacks him casually on the back of the head. Possibly yeah. killing him, maybe KOing him. Who knows? Yeah, that yeah. you know that good old like frat paddle that you you know yeah. everybody sees in all the movies. Um, but Franken bitch, that's a th- <laughs> yeah. Was, was that supposed to be a uh, was that supposed to be the the actual title of this movie? And then they came up with something better. Is that what happened? Yeah, Franken bitch would be a great title for this, mm-hmm. but patchwork works. It's a 
you know, it's it's a little like generic, but it definitely works. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so she starts kind of questioning him, and we finally get some possibly useful information. Lance saw Ellie get into a white van with a med student. So presumably he saw the unconscious hit by a van Ellie being like sort of weakened at Bernie's into the van. <laughs> right. But he, so he thinks that she willingly got in this van and is like, I don't know what happened after that. She went with those med students. But, you know, so she goes ahead and kills Lance too. Well, obviously. Can, can we talk about how he tries to beg for his life? <laughs> he literally just says, I love you. <laughs> and it's like, what? What was that supposed to do? <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I'm a, I'm a good guy, I promise. <laughs> I'm a good guy. Uh, you son uh. of a bitch. But yeah, she jabs him in the head with a, a butterfly knife that she's been just, like, casually carrying around. <laughs> yeah. So, yep, she kills him, and then before she leaves, she takes the, the little tape out of the camera yeah. and snaps it. So, obviously doesn't want anybody to make use of whatever weird shit he's filmed in the past. Right. So then they're in their in the car after the fact and they're kind of like celebrating like another one bites the dust basically and then they're like have you noticed there's this white van that's been following us all night that's just right back there Can we comment <laughs> up about how Madeline just casually says that the murders just felt right <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Okay, all right. I mean, that's when they're all, like, celebrating their victory, but yeah. Yeah, now that we know Madeline for sure is a serial killer, and now it's like uh, pieces are kind of coming into place, and it's like she's she's the one who's, like, really kind of, like, the catalyst for the, for the violence here. She's yeah. really enjoying that aspect of this. But then we cut to Lloyd and uh, Will, and... Uh, <laughs> They're having a discussion about a Chick-fil-A sandwich. <laughs> and it's it's like the donut thing again. They're in this like heated argument about a sandwich and he's like, "It's fine. It's just it's just chicken and bread. It's whatever. I it, it's a good sandwich, but it's it's a sandwich." But it's and the he's sauce like, that brings it together. Yeah, it's it's the fucking sauce. You got to appreciate the sauce. Mm-hmm. It's like Eric Edelson's like the one who's like really into the food and he's just yeah. like, they, you know, and finally he convinces him to be like, yes, you know, I'll admit it was, it's a good sandwich. And he's like, that's all I fucking wanted, man. Why don't right. you just talk to me about your feelings? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love it. He's like, I know there's a heart in there somewhere. You got to let it out. Yeah. It's just a chicken sandwich, man. <laughs> But so they've apparently been driving this whole time. And even though the girls saw that they were being followed by a van, they went ahead and drove back to Jennifer's apartment. And so the van pulls up and now sees Jennifer's car parked there with like the doors are all just hanging open as if they like rushed out and ran inside. So they're like, oh, we got to figure out what something, something weird's going on. So they get out of the van. Well, they don't necessarily get out of the van. Uh, Will gets pulled out of the van. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he, yeah, it seems like they've killed him pretty much right out of the gate. Well, they're beating uh, him in the head with a brick. I would hope yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, the other one is like, well, we're just doing our job. We're just, we're observing. We're, we didn't, you know, we don't know anything about what's going on. We're just being paid to follow you around and see what's going on. Like, Yeah, we're not here to hurt you. Yeah. Uh, then he just tases her out of nowhere. Yeah. She, like, falls... You know, we, we've we been told that she doesn't feel pain, but clearly, like, I guess the electricity of the taser is a little bit different story, so she kind yeah, of, like... Yeah, uses up muscles. Yeah, so she falls and kind of twitches for a little bit, but then instantly, like, yanks out the taser barb, stands up, yeah. and chases after him, and, you know, also beats him to death. He's trying to get something out of the back of the van. I'm not I'm not sure what, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, she gets him and absolutely kills Lloyd. Then we start to hear some police sirens in the distance, but wisely before they leave, they uh, you know, the creature digs through the glove box of the van and just basically takes all the papers that are in there. We'll figure it out later basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, they take that and they leave. And then we cut to Garrett. He's at his apartment by himself playing Castlevania. And they're at the Frankenstein boss stage. <laughs> such a nice little touch you just I gotta know. love it it's so good <laughs> i'm like this man he's my brother <laughs> but unfortunately there's a knock at the door who interrupts his game and he's like hang on just a minute and he pauses goes to the door and it's you know it's the creature obviously mm-hmm. he you know he lets her in and sees that she's got some injuries yeah she has a fractured forearm that's broken out <laughs> Yeah. She beat the guy so hard she broke her forearm. Yeah. So he's like, now this, you know, I can't I can't do the other stuff, but I can help with this. So like they, you know, they sit down, they they both have like a glass of wine as he like well, stitches her up. Yeah, by the way, she 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 judges this man too harshly, I might add, because he has the original NES up through N64, Sega Genesis, PS2, uh, 
and an Xbox 360. <laughs> I'm like, no, this guy just, he knows where it's at. He knows what he likes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's... So then we get like the creature flirting, a l- sort of flirting with Garrett. Yeah. And then we've got the three like internal women and they're t- kind of talking about it. And then they kind of like decide to put it to a vote. Like, are we going to sleep with Garrett? Right. Ellie and Madeline are like, yes. Yes. And, and then Jennifer, Jennifer, thou doth protest too much was like, fine, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so they're going forward, and it starts with, like, them making out, and it's in slow motion, and it's mm-hmm. super awkward. <laughs> it feels like, they, you know, the creature has not quite gotten the hang of, like, fine motor skills of the mouth, basically. I, I should hope not. <laughs> and, by the way, props to Tori Stolper, the actress for, for Jennifer slash the creature, because she just licks this man's entire face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's something. Yeah. And then it like cuts to them having sex and like the sex is then like not awkward in the same way, but it's it's very rough and athletic and like Garrett seems maybe out of his depth a little bit. Like I would say so. Once he gets tied down and they bring out the uh, the butterfly knife, I'm like, oh, no, is he going to die here? No, they just want to tie him up and get kinky. Yeah. I want to note I have never, ever seen a sex scene and been in a defensive fighting stance until this movie (laughs) it was so aggressive and like you we get like you know her kind of like pounding her hand on the wall which is you know you see that in sex scenes sometimes uh as like a a way to cut away from the action but still make it look actiony but then her hand just falls off off. from from hitting the the wall so hard And then we pretty much cut from that to like postcoital moment. They're kind of cuddling, and the creature Turns out says, "Jennifer was in control." Yeah, oh, the creature. <laughs> she's like, "We needed that." Right. <laughs> but it, but it was clearly like the presence of Jennifer was in the bed. They, oh they yeah, to, yeah. And then they turn on the TV, and we get like a news report about this frat house was attacked, and everybody's dead in there. Right. Uh, Very excited. This news lady is for all this uh, carnage. <laughs> yeah. So they've got Garrett sort of like looking through all of the papers they pulled out of the glove box, which is you know medical records and Chick Fil A wrappers. <laughs> and I think there's like you know obviously like the title to the van and all license and registration kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, they're just trusting him to go through it. And he's like, I, I don't see anything in here useful. Nothing nothing that would tell you where you need to go next. Uh, it looks like this is a dead end, unfortunately. And so they're kind of, you know, it's like, well, that's a bummer. And he, like, well, leaves the room. Can we talk about how she's pouring orange juice into her cereal? <laughs> I mean, I, like, I kind of want to try it, but I'm also afraid. Like... <laughs> I, I don't know, man. That's wild. I wonder, like, maybe with, like, Fruity Pebbles or something? Maybe that maybe. might be. All know. right, we're going to give that a shot one day. We'll see what, <laughs> how, how that works out. But what was Garrett doing while he was uh, while he was hiding away? Or Yeah, he goes to the kitchen and tries to, like, burn up all the papers <laughs> on the stove. But, you know, the creature catches him at it and, you know, is like, what are you doing? And they, you know, they take him from him. And he's like, listen, y- you need to drop this. Like, you're, it's not safe. You're fine. Like, you need to just move on with your life. But obviously, they can't do that. So, you know, they see an address and he's like, fine, if you're going to go, let me go with you. We'll team up and handle this. And they're like, no. And so they like. I do like how he's like, for your protection, let me go with you. And then it's like, they're kind of looking at him like, really? And then <laughs> yeah. cut to the creature locking him up uh, <laughs> yeah. on the bed again with the handcuffs. It's like, I'm doing this for your protection. Yeah. So they leave and we get some more like internal monologue with them. And they're like, maybe, you know, maybe we should give up on this. Maybe he's right. But Madeline's like, no, we got to do this. Like, you know, we've got to avenge what's happened. She's got to do more murders. Yeah. She just wants more murders. But, (laughs) you know, she convinces them that this is what they need to do to like possibly, you know, get some sort of normalcy back in their lives. Right. And of course, uh, Garrett pulls a staple out of his mouth from all that weird kinky creature (laughs) sex. And you know what else we get right after that? Part Part seven. seven. (laughs) Madeline, part two. Yeah. Part seven, part two. (laughs) Yeah. So now we see Madeline at the sketchy plastic surgery spot that Ah. we saw the, the commercial for earlier in Jennifer's bit. So at first it's the, the Capri Sun guy is the guy behind the desk. He's like the receptionist assistant. Yeah. 
And like, he's like, just have a seat. Well, you know, we'll get to you. This whole bit's kind of like more comic relief. Like all, you know, all the lab coat guys are, are comedy. Uh, but he he calls the the main surgeon. you know reanimator surgeon guy. Like I think he says like she's a doesn't he give her a number rating? I was... Yeah, was it a was it a was it a seven or an eight? Yeah, it was something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically he goes down and breaks down all of her features and he's like, yeah, she looks good. To little... I don't know how she smells, but uh, I mean, <laughs> he's like maybe like peaches, like right? a peach. <laughs> I can't. I think it's a peach. I, I didn't get a good smell, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's just like super weird. Yeah, it's weird and creepy. <laughs> but so you know, ultimately, he she gets led back to talk to the surgeon, who then uh, sniffs her to, to confirm. <laughs> and he's like, "So, what would you like to change?" And she's like, "Well, basically, uh, you know, I need like a facelift and like my boobs and maybe get like implant, uh, like butt implants my finger, and my fingertips." <laughs> <laughs> she just basically lists her entire body. When she wants to yeah. change everything. Um, so clearly, like, you know, in addition to whatever weird serial killer stuff Madeline's dealing with, she also has supremely low self-esteem and, like, right. her body image is, is not great. Did you know um, she also wanted to be blonde and brunette? <laughs> yeah, he asked hair preference and she's like, blonde? No, uh, brunette. And he's just like, marks it all down. And so, uh, obviously, that points mm. back to why she was blonde and brunette. Mm. <laughs> That's yeah, weird. And so the doctor's like, well, I can take you down. You know, we've got some bodies on some slabs. You can kind of shop, see what you want. Yeah, I do notice you have a history of mental illness, but that's not, not nothing here nor there. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, what's your policy on supplying your own parts? Uh, <laughs> and so then, you know, we cut to, you know, we saw Madeline taking selfies with her phone in the bar. Oh, but, but real quick, can we also note that whenever uh, the surgeon's walking her through his lab... He's like, yeah, we've only got a few with a little meth in their system, uh, no hormones, GMOs. And I'm like, hey, wait a second. Maybe some of them do have hormones. You don't know. What do you got to judge? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. And he's like, yeah, they're mostly in a decent age range, not dead too long-ish. Uh, it's like, it's, yeah. you know, it's definitely very sketchy, which yeah. is why she's like, let me go pick out some fresh bodies. Yeah. So yeah, she's, she's the one who's filming in the bar. Taking all the photos. Yeah. And so we see her hitting Ellie with the van, hitting Jennifer with the baseball bat. So yeah, yeah she's been the, not just that she's picked them out, but she's done this violence. She was the one driving the van. She's the one swinging the bat. Both Lloyd and Will were in the van while she was driving. <laughs> Yeah. So they could pick pick up the body right then and there. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So then we see we're back at the lab and you've got Jennifer and Ellie on slabs as the doctor's kind of prepping. And he's like putting the gas mask on Madeline. And he's like, are you 100% sure you want to go through with this? And she's like, well, I, and he just like and cranks boom. up the gas and she's like, knocked just out. smacks it with her. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't even get a chance to say no. Yeah. But I do love how he immediately busts out the reciprocating saw and he's like, <laughs> go into town. Yeah. Like this is not like surgical tools. This is no. like, you know, hardware store tools. There is no precision here. Yeah, and it's like super gory. There's like blood and guts and stuff going everywhere. It's it's very reanimator again, mm -hmm. uh, like blood splatting him in the face as he's working, and it's silly fun gore. And then we cut to the next title card, part eight, miscreations. Mm. So now we've got the creature breaking into the lab with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Will Will apparently didn't die. Yeah, so she immediately like chops off his, <laughs> his leg. Fine. And then it beats, beats him, him to, to death, death with it. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, it's classic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then she is just kind of walking around the hallways of the lab, dragging the axe, you know, in that like cool murdery way where you're holding the hand the handle and you got like the metal of the of the axe head dragging on the ground, making that scraping sound, uh, leaving Very a little trail of blood. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so she gets into the main lab. She's and there's... Humpty Dumpty, by the way. <laughs> yeah. she, just to be, and she's carrying Will's leg. I mean, I mean, if we haven't already mentioned that. <laughs> so yeah, it's like she's gone full full bonkers here, but not really. She's just being creepy <laughs> to be creepy. That's her aesthetic. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> and so the doctor, the main doctor, is there, and he's just really chill, and he's like, "Oh, great! I'm so good to see you again. You look amazing." I don't, what happened with You're the right. hair, though? I don't, I'm not sure about that, but, you know, we could, we I, could I fix it. I thought you did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked how it was, like, you know, yellow and brown, and, you know, now it's all pink. We, we, can, we can fix it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll fix it in post. But, of course, the girls aren't happy to see him, or at least most of the girls aren't happy to see him. Yeah, and so then we get, like, they're like, You're, you'll pay for what you did to us? And he's like, us? Wait, 
you're you're actually the three people you're all in there and like he's like super excited about this you know yeah, you're a gestalt being yeah yeah and but he's like but madeline what why are you upset like this is what you wanted like i did exactly what you asked for and right. then you know so obviously now jennifer and ellie are in on what we've kind of seen happen yeah basically the full villain reveal is dropped here as if you couldn't tell from earlier yeah and you know madeline's like yeah but like we're almost perfect now like we you know we were all very flawed and now like we're we're getting there like we're, we're gonna be whole like person yeah but like obviously they're not happy about that so like jennifer's like i don't want to be a part of you you're monster and so we get like them in their sort of like imaginary space and it's the three of them like fighting and then in real life you just have the creature like punching itself in the face and like you know just attacking its own body basically stabbing itself in the hand with a scalpel <laughs> Yeah. Then, like, eventually, or, and like, as this fight's going on, like, the doctor's like, "Oh, I can fix that. That's fine. Oh, that, right, no big yeah. deal. We can take care of that." Uh, and then, like, finally, Ellie just like grabs some random potion and is like, "I'm gonna drink this if you don't stop. I'm gonna kill us." Yeah. Before she can, though, the doc presses his uh, garage door opener slash monster awakener button <laughs> and yeah this is a very reanimator all <laughs> the corpses in the lab just rise up all at once mm -hmm. uh and so like you know obviously he's got this sort of like army of they're more like the the reanimator zombie type corpses they're right. they're not the self-sufficient things that the jennifer ellie madeline monster sure. is yeah so I, honestly when i saw this i saw like i thought there was a giant snake thing with like a hundred hands because it <laughs> the like a bunch of hands come out and basically <laughs> grab the creature yeah and then we split away then we cut away to <laughs> garrett who's still cuffed in his apartment and he's watching a tom blake movie hey he's watching the tom blake adventures and um in this one tom blake needs to break out of handcuffs so he shows how to do that and then garrett's he like dislocates hmm. his thumb <laughs> Yeah. So Garrett manages to do the same and he's like, you know, he's going to go save the day. And then we cut back to the lab and the, you know, the creature is strapped down on a slab and the doctor's like, you know, I'm so proud of what you all have become. Like, this is amazing. You're my best work. But unfortunately, I got to take you apart now so that I can figure out what I did so that I can do it right, again. Do it again. <laughs> I'm doing it hundreds of times over. You're going to be the prototype. You should be so proud. Right. And so he pulls out his power because saw. He, he reveals this has never worked before. <laughs> yeah. So he was basically offering Madeline just empty promises. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I could do this. No, no he, he never had done this before. This was brand new. But before he can cut into her, the doorbell rings. So he's like, ah, hang on. So he goes upstairs and there's Garrett. But of course he preps his pistol and he tells the zombies, hey, get started. But don't eat. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, Garrett's there. Garrett has like, he's not trying to use any subterfuge here at all. He's just like, so I'm looking for this like kind of weird looking woman who's like got stitches all over her face. And like, mm -hmm. have you seen any sort of like monstrous woman around? Right. I think she was coming here. Like, Serge is like, nope, nope, nope. No one here by that name. And of yeah. course, Garrett's like, well, can I go in and take a look? It, it's pretty clear that Garrett's kind of already figured out she's probably here. And this guy's probably <laughs> the sketchy dude that has something to do with it. Yeah, but he, like he doesn't try to be sneaky about it. He just keeps kind of nudging his way in, and he's he does he clearly doesn't seem to realize that he is in danger as well from this guy. Right. And that, of course, that ends up we cut back to the creature breaking free from the zombies, and then back to Garrett who is getting hit from behind and knocked yeah. out by he the gets doctor. Pistol whipped, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the doctor drags him down into the lab while the creature is fighting off zombies with a saw. Mm -hmm. So the doctor arrives with Garrett as the room is just like sprayed with blood. He like looks around and he's like, you monster. <laughs> right. You killed all my creations. How dare you? <laughs> so he starts like shooting in the process. Garrett ends up getting shot instead of right. the creature. Because Garrett's smart and jumps in front of the creature. <laughs> it's like, no, I think, I think they could take it. Yeah. And then probably the funniest line in the whole movie, he's this like, is so classic. He's laying there dying and he just like looks up at her and he's like, it wasn't this worth re it. This really wasn't it's worth, worth it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm glad you came to that realization, Garrett, but I'm um, sorry that it was this late. In the yeah. Game. And so he falls, you know, falls dead there. Mm -hmm. And so then inside the little like the mind palace jennifer and ellie are like we vote to kill madeline right <laughs> madeline's like i vote against it <laughs> so they're like 
in the you know in that space they're just attacking madeline but then we see like in real life they've got a drill and they're just like drilling through the roof of their own mouth right. trying to like lobotomize the madeline part somehow <laughs> and i guess they get it but however the surgeon realizes he's in a really bad situation he's got one hope left what does he call for archimedes <laughs> the owl cat <laughs> And this is this is such a great dumb <laughs> non payoff payoff because he's just like he says like release the owl cat and like right. fly Archimedes fly. fly yeah and then the owl cat just flies through the room and then just flies out the window and he flies forgot away. it was a cat part cat <laughs> yeah. it doesn't give and, a shit <laughs> yeah and he's just like fuck <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well at least the surgeon has some good news though. He's going to be murdered by one of his own creations, one of his greatest dreams that he's ever had. Yeah. He's well, like, I figured that happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Then now we see in, like, the internalized scenes, we got, you know, Madeline and... The lobotomized Madeline. <laughs> yeah, so Madeline's just kind of, like, jaw hanging slack, drooling, just, like, standing there. With, with and a then drill like, hole in her forehead. Yeah, and then Jennifer and Ellie are like, let's not kill the doctor, we still need him. Yeah. So now we cut to something that looks similar to what we've seen before, where we've got like a new creature waking up on a slab, kind of sitting up awkwardly, uh, you know, kind of shambling to the bathroom, getting to the mirror and looking in the mirror. And there is Garrett all stitched up and, you know, recreated. But behind him is the creature and she's really (laughs) excited to see him. Yeah. And then it's just patchwork again, and it's. Yep. Can, can I let me let me say this? Why did they have to cut Garrett up at all? Like that much? You just need a new heart. You just yeah. got shot in the heart. That's it. Yeah, I don't know if they just wanted him to look right. like a creature to match them. I, I, we want you to look like us because that's not weird and creepy, and that's going to be a healthy relationship. Or yeah. did they somehow make him out of three guys? Yeah, I don't. I mean, maybe they they did use some parts from. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But why? But he was perfectly. <laughs> fine yeah just needed a heart oh, well. totally pointless but yeah, yeah it's a you you know this is definitely sort of like a reverse bride of frankenstein yeah. thing or like a kind of like frankenhooker in a way you know which we obviously haven't talked about yet but we're getting there it, it feels like it's sort of a happy ending but like also you know like we've got jennifer and ellie are not as crazy as madeline but they're definitely not not crazy <laughs> right and i feel like poor garrett is like i didn't sign up for any of this <laughs> yeah yeah, but it's a nice, not abrupt ending here. We kind of get this nice cap with the uh, second creature. Uh, and yeah, it's just, you know, like you saying like the, with the Garrett thing, it's like it almost leaves it open. Like it'd be interesting to see, are there more than one person in Garrett? Like are we, you know, but obviously there's no sequel to this. Right, there's no sequel. Uh, <laughs> but, it, you know, it leaves you wanting more and, and you know, but not like feeling like you've, you're missing anything either. So, right. yeah, it's a nice, fun. It's a dumb, fun movie. Yeah, it's it's it is. It's dumb. It's got a lot of silly humor, but it's also like the sort of central hook is pretty clever. You know, like yeah. the, the whole mind palace thing and like the creature sort of working with itself in a way. It's interesting. Like, I, I you know, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. To be the, the punny guy that I am. It's almost like this is a patchwork of dumb and very thoughtful movie making. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, because everything's set up, like, especially the everything with Madeline. And it's, a lot of the stuff with Madeline is blink and you'll miss it until the reveal happens and then it's clear, you know. She's yeah. doing all the bad stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely a fun one. That's why we like re- recommended watching it last week before the show. But like, yeah, even like if you know, you know, I watched, I've seen this before, and I still like it's a lot of fun this time. Yeah. So like, you know, if we've spoiled it for you, it's still totally worth checking out. Yeah, it's on Tubi. I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So go check it out there. This one, uh, I would say, deserves a sequel. If it doesn't necessarily get one, I wouldn't be heartbroken. But this world is one that seems lived in and that we need to go back to. Yeah, yeah. It's ripe for, you know, expanding on this in some fun ways. Right. And honestly, if they meld it into a reanimator, like the surgeon was the son of uh, Herbert West, which I don't know how that would happen, but okay. I, I, <laughs> I would definitely I would definitely be there for it. Oh, absolutely. You got anything else on this one? No, I think we've said everything we need to say about it. Other than that, where can they find us? So, yeah, you can find us on all the socials, uh, Twitter and Instagram and YouTube at The Frankencast. Uh, you can email us at thefrankencast at gmail.com. 
and you can catch us at Patreon. We, you know, we mentioned that yesterday, or you know, yesterday on the last episode. Uh, it could you have know. been yesterday. They don't know. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got um, a Patreon. We, yeah, we've got a Patreon. Um, while we're recording this, it just launched a couple of days ago, but we've already got. You know, we we have one subscriber so far, uh, yeah. and of course, it's our you know OG Frankencast you know family friend of the show uh, Hayden. So thanks for jumping on, yeah. rock on Hayden, being an early adopter. That's awesome. Uh, we hope to see more people on there because you know we're we're doing some cool stuff there, and we want to have an excuse to do even more. If if there are right. people there who are going to jump on board, then we'll we'll probably open up higher tiers with longer episodes and some other kind of weird things. Uh, And we'll definitely be open to hearing what you all would like us to do there. Right now, we kind of teased it all last week, but we're going to, in the lower tier, you're going to get two bonus episodes a month. They're going to just kind of be grab bags, whatever we're in the mood to talk about. Sometimes Frankenstein, sometimes not. Always Frankenstein adjacent. Oh, yeah, yeah. We might do mailbag episodes if people send us questions, just whatever. And then in the higher up tier, which is $5 a month, uh, you'll get four episodes every month. You'll get the you know the other two, and then you'll get two additional that are going to be sort of more episodic things. Uh, to start with, we're going to do like a book club, go through Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and we're going to do that in like chunks, so you can kind of read along if you want. And then we're also going to be going through the Munsters, probably like a couple episodes at a time. Yeah, the old 1960 of... show first, and then maybe if we can find it, we're going to go through Munsters today. Yeah, yeah, Which we really want to do that, but it's it's been difficult to, to track down. Yeah, yeah, but we're we're working on it. But you know, we love the monsters, and it'll it's also kind of feels like a fun sort of lead up to the the Rob Zombie movie that's coming soon. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to kind of ride along with us on that and kind of check those out, you know, before the the big movie drop later this year, then you know we'd love to have you for that as well. Yeah, well, those of you in the future, you probably know when the uh, the movie has dropped, but honestly, we don't. <laughs> even even at this late hour, being June 2022, 20, uh, the end of June 2022. Yeah, the, we know it's supposed to come out 2022, but we don't yeah. know when. Like, there's, I'm guessing October-ish because it's a, More you likely. know, but we don't, we don't have word on that specifically. We'll probably try to do some stuff for that as it gets closer mm-hmm. uh, on the main feed as well. But you can obviously join along on the Patreon with the original show. Yep. And then so next week, this is an interesting, you know, my skin kind of itches. It feels <laughs> like really nasty. You know, the skin I live in. <laughs> so, yeah, this one I don't know much about, but this is not one I've seen. I, I think it has like Javier Bardem. Uh, uh, it, no, it, Antonio Banderas. And to, oh, Antonio, Antonio Banderas. Antonio yeah, Banderas. Yeah. Um, and this looks like it's a little bit more like true to life like more surgical drama but uh, but there's definitely some frankenstein elements to it from what i gather uh so it's felt like a, a big left turn from from this kind of kind of silly movie so I, I thought it'd be kind of fun to to give that a shot i i read a little bit up on this and i i'm not i'm not excited to see this one <laughs> i am not that makes I'm me even more dreading, excited i'm actively <laughs> dreading this but we're gonna we're gonna do it you know because so, that's what we do, damn it. For science. <laughs> so if it's a difficult watch for us, it'll probably be a fun episode for you all. So, mm-hmm. uh, so join us for, for that next week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. And until then... To be continued. Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaking Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at the Freaking Cast, or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Habeshek. Thanks for listening. <laughs>